So far, we've learned how to integrate over a rectangle using Fubini's theorem, but that only works for a rectangle. And what if we have a function of two variables and we want to integrate it over some region like this, let's call the region D, and it's not a rectangle, what can we do? How can we evaluate this integral? We wanna do the integral over D of f of x, y, dA, how can we compute this? So the trick is to just draw a rectangle that contains D. So we'll draw, draw a rectangle that looks like this. Let's call this rectangle R. And let's define a new function, capital F of x, y, that's defined to be lowercase f of x, y, if, the point x, y belongs to D. So if we're looking at a point that belongs to the region D, then capital F is equal to lowercase f. But if we're looking at some point that does not belong to D, then capital F is just equal to zero. So in other words, we just extend, we take lowercase f and we extend it to all of this rectangle R just by defining it to be zero outside of this region D. And notice the integral over D of lowercase f of x, y is equal to the integral over R of capital F of x, y. Why are these integrals equal? Well, the part there in this integral over here, there's no contribution coming from this background region that does not belong to D because capital F is zero everywhere in the background region. So there's no contribution. So these two integrals are the same. This is, that's the trick that's going to allow us to use Fubini's theorem even when we're integrating over a non-rectangular region. Just extend our function F so that we are integrating over a rectangle. Now, uh, often we're working over, often we're integrating over a region, which is what's called a type one region. And what that means is it's the region in a plane that falls between the graph of a function G1 and also the graph of a function G2. So it looks like this. Here's the graph, here's A, here's B, here's the graph of a function g1 and here's a vertical line and here's the graph of a function g2 here's a vertical line sometimes often the region we want to integrate over looks like this this is called a type one region and for a type one region d d is the set of all points x comma y in the plane such that x is between a and b and y is between g1 of x and g2 of x this is a type one region right here. Okay, now uh, let's say we want to do an integral, compute the integral over D of a function lowercase f of x, y, dA. Let's say we want to compute this integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine we're going to draw a rectangle which contains D. We're going to draw a larger rectangle which contains D. And here it is. Let's say here this value of Y is C and up here this value of Y is D. Do you see this larger rectangle here that contains D? And we're going to extend f, we're going to extend f to be zero. 
outside of D. So the integral of f over our type 1 region D is equal to the integral over R of capital F of x, y, d, a, where, capital, where R is this larger rectangle that we drew up here, this larger rectangle. That's what R is. OK. Now, this integral is equal to this integral. But in this integral, we are integrating over a rectangle, so we can use Fubini's theorem. So according to Fubini's theorem, this integral is equal to the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of capital F of x, y, dy, dx. Now let's, let's think about the, the meaning of this inner integral. Let's visualize this inner integral. What's happening here is that we have a fixed value of x, which is between a and b, and we're integrating with respect to y. So in this picture here, what's happening is we have a fixed value of x between a and b, and we're integrating with respect to y. We're integrating from c up to d. But notice that capital F is zero here, and capital F is zero up here. Capital F is only non-zero in this region where, where y goes from g1 of x up to g2 of x. So integrating capital F from c to d is equivalent to, to just integrating from g1 of x to g2 of x. There's no contribution in this little region here, and there's no contribution from this little region here. The only thing that contributes is the part of the integral that goes from g1 of x to g2 of x. So the, this inner integral is equal to the integral from g1 of x to g2 of x of f of x, y, dy. So the integral that we want to evaluate is equal to the integral from a to b of this inner integral, which is with respect to y, and the outer integral is with respect to dx. Now, one final comment here. Capital F, as long as, we're res as, long as y is restricted to be between g1 of x and g2 of x, in this range of y values here, capital F is equal to lowercase f. So this integral is equal to the integral from a to b of the integral from g1 of x to g2 of x of lowercase f of x, y, d, y, dx. And this is a formula that we can use to evaluate integrals when we're integrating over a region of type 1. This, come, this is material from section 15.2 of Stuart. You can find this formula in section 15.2. This is how we integ integrate a function of two variables over a type 1 region. OK, the next thing to discuss is what if we have, there's another type of region, which is called a type 2 region. A type two region is a region that looks like this. We have a horizontal line here. We have a horizontal line here. Here we have a curve that looks like this. And the equation for this curve is x equals h1 of y. And here we have a curve that looks something like this. The equation for this curve is x equals h2 of y. So for any fixed value of y, the, the starting value of x is h1 of y. And the stopping value of x is h2 of y. So how, how can we evaluate the integral over, let's say this type 2 region is called d. How can we evaluate the integral over d of f of x, y, d, a? What do we do? Well, again, the trick is to draw a larger rectangle which contains the region d. So let's draw 
a rectangle that looks like this. We're drawing a rectangle that looks like this. This is a larger rectangle that contains my region D. Let's call this rectangle R. And let's say that the, the value of Y here, let's say it's C, and the value of Y here is D. So, and again, let's introduce our function capital F by extending the value of F to be zero outside of D. So the integral of lowercase f over the region D is equal to the integral of capital F over the region R. And now since we're integrating over a rectangle, we can use Fubini's theorem. And according to Fubini's theorem, let me, let me label this starting value of x. This value of x is gonna be, I'm gonna call it A. This value of x here is gonna call it, I'm gonna call it B. According to Fubini's theorem, this integral is equal to the integral from C to D of the integral from A to B of F of X, Y, DX, DY. That comes from Fubini's theorem. And now let's think about what's happening in this inner integral here. For a fixed value of, we have a fixed value of y, which is between c and d, and we're integrating with respect to x. And so let's draw this. We have a fixed value of y between c and d, and we're integrating with from here over to here, we're integrating with respect to x. But notice that capital F is zero in this region, and capital F is zero in this region. Capital F is only non-zero between here and here. So that's the only range of values where we have a, a non-zero contribution. So, The integral from a to b of f of x, y, dx, our inner integral is equal to just the integral from, inst instead of integrating all the way from a to b with respect to x, we may as well start here. And we may as well stop here because there's no contribution from this outside region. So we're gonna just start at the starting value of x, which is h1 of y. And we're going to integrate over to the stopping value of x, which is h2 of y. And then capital F of x, y, dx. That's what our inner integral is equal to. And now one more comment. As long as we are restricting ourselves to this range of values here, capital F is equal to lowercase f in this range. So that means that this is equal to the integral from h1 of y to h2 of y of lowercase f of x, y, dx. Okay, the inner integral is equal to this. Now, let's return to, this is, the, this is where we were, and we just found out that this inner integral is equal to this. So let's, let's put these pieces together. Let's, let's finish this off. What, what we have discovered is that the integral over d of f of x, y, d, a is equal to the integral from c to d. And then the inner integral we have discovered is the integral from h1 of y to h2 of y. 
f of x, y dx, and the outer integral is with respect to y. So this is our formula that we can use to evaluate the integral of a function of two variables over a type two region. This again, this formula can be found in section 15.2 of Stewart. 